Welcome back to Blender 4 Biochemists, uh, continuing the series of molecular nodes, and today we're finally going to get into the molecular dynamics import using MD analysis. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to go into Edit Preferences and search for molecular nodes. And so as you can see, Atomium's there, Atomium's fine but the installation of MD analysis is not yet available. And so if we go to our molecular nodes panel as well, we can see if we go to MD trajectory that it's not available, we can't import anything. And this is just to stop you from getting weird errors, basically weird Python errors. I've just disabled it unless it's actually available. Unlike Atomium, which can be installed inside of the Python version that is bundled with Blender, you can't actually install and compile MD analysis because it requires some more advanced sort of compilation. To get around this, you can install MD analysis in a different Python uh, somewhere else on your system and then link it to the Python inside of Blender. Now, this has some potential for version mismatches and things to go wrong. In As a recording, Blender 3.2, as um, Python version 3.10. And so you ideally want to set up a Python installation of 3.10. So whether that's using uh, virtual environments, Anaconda, however you want to go about it, but you install Python 3.10 and then install MD analysis, and then you can link it over. And so I'm going to open up um, my Python. So if we go Python, you can see I'm Python version 3.10. And if I just import MD analysis as MDA, now I've already installed MD analysis in this version of Python. And now that I've imported MD analysis, I can get the path. And so this is the location of where MD analysis is actually installed. And so I'm going to need to copy this without the quotation marks and without these final backslashes and this final MD analysis. So just to the site packages, control C to copy, paste it in there. And then I'm going to click check installation. And so this has now basically made available to the Python version inside of Blender, MD analysis, which is installed for a different Python version. Now this is a hacky solution, but it's the best that I could come up with. And once you get it set up and it works, it seems to be pretty stable. So this is a big thanks to the folks at MD Analysis who develop it. I've just hijacked their code, which enables the import in trajectories. And so you'll see that if I mouse over here, this is now available. So in the examples on my documentation page that I will link to in the description and is also linked to on my GitHub, if we scroll down, there's an example here for animating the COVID spike protein. And so the example here links to the Charm GUI website where you can download a bunch of different molecular dynamics trajectories. Of course, you can follow along with your own molecular dynamics trajectory, but this is just an example files. And so this will download several gigs worth of trajectory. And I'm going to use that now as an example. Now you, now you can follow this through the written documentation, which will take you through it. And this is what we're about to do, um, but we're gonna do it uh, in person. So download the XTC as it's explained on the website, or as it's explained in my documentation, unzip the file that it gives you. You're gonna have to wait a while because it's several gigabytes. And then we are basically ready to go. So I'm back in molecular nodes and Blender. So you're going to need a topology file and a trajectory file. So your topology file will define the structure. Your trajectory file will define the actual movement of that structure. If, you're, if you have access to molecular dynamics files, then you probably already know most of this. But let's go downloads, trajectory, and our last frame no solvent.pdb. So that's going to be our topology. And then downloads and our uh, trajectory no solvent.xtc. 
So you can see that's one and a half gigabytes worth of trajectory. We are not going to, you can if you would like, import all of the frames into Blender. The save file will be end up around eight or seven gigabytes. Um, I haven't yet set up a way to stream trajectory files. That seems like a lot more effort than it's probably worth. So I'm not gonna work on that for the moment. But for the moment, just like when you're importing into any kind of uh, molecular viewer, you can skip intervals from your trajectory. So you can either so you can either skip certain intervals when you export from something like um, VMT or Pymol, or on import here you can skip as well. So we're going to go every fifth frame. Actually, let's go every tenth. Yeah, let's go every fifth frame. And so start frame one, every fifth frame, and up to frame 5,000. In this simulation, there aren't 5,000 frames, but it's just up to 5,000. And so I'm gonna say spike protein, and then I'm going to click import frames. And so this is the point when you wait, and you might hear your computer fans spin up and as they start doing their thing. Now importing via MD analysis will actually be faster than importing via Atomium because Atomium is a pure Python library, which is why it was so easy to install. But molecular uh, MD analysis has a lot of stuff written in C, which will make importing and running a lot faster, but it ultimately made it more complex to install. And so now we'll wait probably about a minute or so, or maybe several minutes if you have a slightly slower system for all of those frames to import into molecular nodes. Okay, so everything has appeared like you're probably potentially used to now. There's a whole bunch of gray spheres. And if everything has gone correctly, we can just press space and our animation will begin playing. Now, as you can see, we have an FPS of five or so because there is a lot of information to process. So molecular nodes is having to churn through a lot of information here, but it's playing back your animation inside of Blender. So let's view it. If we go cycles, GPU compute and into rendered view, we'll see just like that, all of our atoms correctly colored and ready to go. So you'll see, because we are dealing with a molecular dynamics trajectory, all of the hydrogens are imported. Now, you could probably get away with deleting those hydrogens in a different software to drastically reduce the, ad the atom count if you wanted to not visualize them to speed up computation. We can also remove them inside of molecular nodes, but we're going to play around with some different visualizations. So I'm going to get that light I'm going to delete that light. I might add in a area light and add in a plane. And make this light much more powerful. And bigger. And our camera is all the way in here. So I'm going to grab our camera, GZZ, and zoom out. Now you'll notice that the camera can't actually see after a certain distance. By default, Blender spawns cameras with an end distance of 100 meters. So we're just going to crank that up, GZ, bring it up about here, punch into about there. We might move that area light. somewhere like that. And now we've got some nice lighting on our COVID spike. And again, we can press play and it will play through the animation. So let's customize the look of this. Uh, let's actually just jump over to the geometry nodes workspace. And we can start customizing the look of our scene. So we've got our animation playing. Uh, we're going to molecular nodes selections. So selections is not something I've gone over a huge amount, but 
we're going to select based on the chains. Now you can select based on the amino acid name. So this is something that's pre-built into molecular nodes to help you select to do, to delete or to hide or to style or to recolor. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go style, color manual. So we're gonna color everything green and then we're gonna go selections, chain. So this is actually built, this node is built per protein. So every protein has a different, or every molecule, every file has a different composition of chain. So this node is built uh, when you click on it for each particular uh, protein. So we're gonna color by selection. And we're just getting a bunch of random lipids. There we go. So that's one chain M. So there we go, that's one of the chains of the spike. Not that one, not that one. Um, I feel like maybe A. Oh, there we go, V is one, and then when this node is created, it's sorted into alphabetical order. I can't really think of a better way to sort of do things, but there we go, so we've got all of our chains. So I'm just, I was doing that purely to be able to select the atoms. What we're going to do is I'm gonna control X to delete that, selections, and atoms, we're going to just grab the three different chains. And so with these three different chains, let's go styling ribbon. And so we've got our ribbons. Now what we might wanna do is actually do a different style for each. So if we go select atoms again and put that on there, and then just choose the first chain. Now we can do ribbon for chain M. And let's move that down here. Let's select our atoms again. And instead, let's do chain V. And so, Let's make this surface. And then if we join those two up, we've got a ribbon representation, we've got a surface representation. And then if we also add in just our O chain, we also now have our atom representation. And so again, this is all being calculated on the fly. So if we press space, it's gonna play back very slow, but the animation does play back. And so we can even now combine that. With all of our atoms from which are all of our ligands. Now you'll notice that something weird goes on with the coloring. This is a bug with Blender currently. Um, I haven't reported it yet, but I need to report it. But it's a weird bug about uh, point cloud rendering. So if we just go geometry to instance and put that on there, then it fixes it. So I don't know why it does it, but it says something that it does currently. And if you wanted to maybe color the entire membrane one color. We could go styling, color manual, and just color this whole membrane some kind of yellowy color. And so there we go. Our animation will play back. Again, very, very slow, but it's because it's computing a lot of different things at once. If you are, if we click on it, 
and go into our timings. So the entire computation is half a second. So if you're rendering a frame and you're rendering you know, 20 seconds per frame, then an extra half a second to compute the actual scene itself in the scheme of things really isn't that big. So if we press F12 and see what that renders out like, we can see what our sort of animation is going to look like. And so we can see this is an example frame of what our animation might look like if you wanted to make an animation or if you just wanted a still frame. Let's rotate that, something like this. And we might even add our a bit of depth of field. Let's go into layout for our depth of field. At 1.4 and adjust this to get some of the spike in focus. So we're really having to put this down to maybe 0 0.01. There we go, that's more like it. And now we can adjust it to get this little bit of the spike in focus. And we might move that back up to 0.05 and then we can render that. And so that's an example of, oh, we've still got our cube hidden in there actually. Let's delete our cube, sacrilege I know. And so that's an example of importing a molecular dynamics trajectory, styling different chains of that trajectory, so the different protein chains, and then also all of the lipids a particular color, and then rendering at least one frame of that out now you can render that whole animation if we wanted to. If you wanted a specific frame, then we can go back to geometry nodes. And if we go to our animate node, and we can change that to a specific frame that we're after. The nodes are getting kind of spaghetti because things are going all over the place, but you're splitting, you're selecting different atoms, you're applying a style, and then you're joining it back together um, after the fact, and then in piping it all out. And so, and so with that, I'll leave you with this image. Um, this is a slightly longer than the previous ones. I'm trying to get out faster, more succinct, tutorials on how to use molecular nodes. I spent a lot of time working on it. And so thank you for taking an interest in it. Thanks to everyone who's made cool images and animations with it so far. Please do keep tweeting them at me. Please keep sending along. If you really appreciate it, you can buy me a coffee because I would really appreciate that. But otherwise you can like, you can share this video with your colleagues and friends if you know they love proteins and of course you can subscribe so thanks so much and i will see you in the next video